And to those critics who are so pessimistic about our economy, I say, don't be economic girly man. That was the 2004 RNC when Arnold Schwarzenegger coined the term economic girly man. But is it just me or right now? In 2017, are there more girly men in our politics and culture than ever? Gone are the days of hypermasculinity, where male archetypes and role models were on a perpetual quest defined by corporal daring and monetary conquest, those very traits responsible for so much that is good and right in the world. Now, male feminism is a thing. Male prime ministers with effeminate lisps use the world stage not to discuss war or trade, but to talk about breeding future generations of male feminists. Uh, he is going to be grow up to be a feminist just like dad. And by the way, we shouldn't be afraid of the word feminist. Men and women should use it to describe themselves anytime they want. And don't get me wrong, standing up for a woman is inherently manly, but how did we get to a point in which a man's idea of protesting violent rapes includes donning a mini skirt while in heels? Today, more and more men are enrolling in women's studies classes. More men are becoming stay-at-home dads, sending their wives off to work in the morning. And more men are becoming, well, women, full stop, as evidenced in the past five years alone, where in the United States, the transgender population has exactly doubled. So why is this happening? Well, one theory might surprise you. Yes, men in school and the workplace are taught misguided sensitivity and courage to share their feelings as opposed to being aggressive in achieving his goals. Yes, their TV shows and movies portray women as the new man, physically, economically, and sexually, hard-bodied and smart, rich and aggressive, and as that's all as opposed to her dorky, if not docile, male counterpart. We know the cultural reasons why girly men are on the rise, but what about the science? Well, as it turns out, it's not just behavior, but biology that's changing in today's man as well. According to international scientists, there's a worldwide deficit occurring right now that no one's talking about, a deficit in testosterone. According to cited studies across America and Europe, there has been a substantial drop in men's testosterone levels since about the 1980s. According to Dr. Thomas Travison and his colleagues behind one such study, the average levels of the male hormone are dropping by about 1% per year. This means that a 40-year-old man in 2017 would have testosterone levels about 20% lower than a 40-year-old in 1997, and researchers say that the drop in testosterone is not even related to age. They observed the same trend regardless of what age level was studied. Men in their 20s had lower T, as did men in their 60s. And as a whole, testosterone levels have declined by about 50% since the 1950s. In other words, your grandfather probably had roughly twice the testosterone you have. So if your grandfather's testosterone was say 750 nanograms per deciliter and yours is roughly 400, what's your grandson's gonna be? It's a really important question and one that's now worrying clinical researchers across the globe. And well, it doesn't even stop there. Male sperm count is also way down. Widely publicized Danish research has found that the number of sperm in each milliliter of semen has halved since World War II. So that today, roughly one in five young men have a low sperm count, which sort of sucks when you consider that low count or poor sperm quality is the reason for infertility in about 20% of cases. This at a time when the West is already suffering from fearfully low birth rates. All right, so. Why is this happening? Well, researchers aren't exactly sure. Some of the working hypotheses have included the rising prevalence of obesity, as well as a sharp decline in cigarette smoking, which typically increases testosterone levels. However, these factors only amount for a really small percentage of the observed difference. So now, researchers, well, they're looking to the food we eat, especially foods that cause changes in our hormones. And bad news. There's one ingredient baked into most of our foods that might be causing the uptick in girly men, soy. 
The truth is 93% of the soy that we consume is bad for us. It decreases testosterone levels and increases estrogen levels, wherein the negative health effects have consequences for both men and woman. As a man, if you're consuming extra estrogen, it's going to give you more female characteristics. And if you're a woman, well, it's going to increase your chances of things like breast cancer, cervical cancer, and other types of hormone imbalance related ailments. Let me explain. First, the history. So soy became popularized in the West after positive health benefits such as a way longer lifespan was observed in populations with soy rich diets, namely Japan. Only problem is the Japanese were eating natto. That's an organic and fermented soy loaded in things like probiotics and amazing vitamins like K2. So well, the West, we want it in not just for the health benefits, but for economics as well, because while soy, it's really cheap to cultivate. It yields a lot of edible things per an acre. You can eat soybeans, but you can also process them and, and make soy sauce, miso paste, soy milk, soy oil, tofu, soy meal, and a lot of other things. Often today, processed foods will use soy as a really inexpensive protein booster or as a texture improver. And if you don't believe me, after you watch this video, honestly, head to your fridge or to your pantry and try to find any item without the word soy marked anywhere on the label. It's literally everywhere. So why are some scientists linking soy, which surrounds us, to girly men? Well, because the soy that we consume acts like an estrogen in our bodies. 93% of the soy products that we eat today are officially GMO, which is great for food manufacturers because it makes the cheap crop even cheaper. It's not so good though for we consumers. These non-fermented, non-organic, genetically modified soybeans, which again, account for 93% of the soy that we consume. Well, these soybeans, they contain compounds called isoflavines, which act as phytoestrogens, plant estrogens in the human body. Translation, soy is chemically similar to the principal female hormone, estrogen, and has similar effects in the body. And as high estrogen levels in men are almost always a direct route to lower testosterone levels, eating soy, which contains estrogenic compounds, is often blamed for lowering testosterone. And there's a lot of science to back that up. Studies like this one, which indicate soy protein decreases testosterone levels in otherwise healthy young men. Studies in which men as young as 19 started consuming hefty amounts of soy when suddenly all interest in sex was lost and erectile dysfunction was experienced. One year after stopping the soy consumption, by the way, normal hormonal profiles were fully regained. Studies that indicate infertile men that eat more soy have lower sperm counts just across the board, while other studies on animals like this one, this one, and this one found that isoflavins in soy can cause breast cancer, another sign of overblown estrogen. Meantime, researchers also found that male rats who received soybean feed while still in the womb they had problems in sexual organ development. And again, that was found in more than just one study. Look, I'm no doctor, but you don't need to be one to read the reports and draw your own conclusions. What I do know is this, traditional gender rules have gone the way of the dodo. And I personally am really over talking about social constructs. Maybe it's time we consider more than just our politics and our culture and ask, if what's in our fridge is feeding the feminization of our society. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm Faith Goldie. I don't usually talk about health, I focus on politics, but hey, if you enjoyed this video, click like below and subscribe to our YouTube channel.